you know, there are a lot of products and tools on the market in higher education, but when it comes to early childhood education, we are missing a lot of opportunities. We saw that opportunity. We decided to start as early as um, two to three years old in early childhood education. A lot of people actually don't realize that that time is a very critical time. There are a lot of early education technology products on the market, but most of them are fairly static. They're apps, or in some cases, electronic toys that deliver one-way content. In this installment of Uptech Report, I talk with Elnaz Saraf, the founder and CEO of Royby, a company that's manufacturing an interactive early learning toy that doesn't merely offer up games and puzzles. It can respond to children's emotions. Elnaz discusses why this level of engagement is so important for early learning and some of the unique challenges a technology such as this encounters with such young users. Elnaz, I'm excited to be with you today and be able to, to dig in and hear how, how did Royby start and, and where is the future of, of where it's going? So to, to begin, if you could describe what your company is, the concept of it in a very brief five seconds, uh, what would you say? Ooh, five seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, thank you for having me and Roy B. Really appreciate it. Um, not so sure about five seconds, but um, we, we started the company about three years ago, which is um, Roy B. It's an AI powered educational robot for kids aged three to seven in language learning and basic STEM. And we launched a product last year in November uh, as a soft launch and um, continuing to expand uh, this year as well. Well, it's an exciting uh, concept and now you're, you're just getting into it in an interesting world as it is. But tell me the, the problem that you initially saw, because I, I actually have a four-year-old. So this, he, he sits you know, right in the midst of your target market. So tell me, what was the problem that you saw that you're like, I need to solve this? Well, first of all, I think uh, to start a company, there has to be um, a personal reason, a personal passion also behind it. Otherwise, you know, nobody's going to go after an idea if they're not passionate about it. So education has been always a passion of mine and also every individual in our team. Uh, but the experience comes from uh, my previous company and one of the co-founders of iBaby, which we have baby monitors. And I spent over five years communicating with parents, understanding the pain points. And education was always something that would actually come up, even if it was just a soothing music for baby. Parents were always asking about content. And uh, always, I wanted to make a much bigger impact in this world. Uh, impact the humanity, if you want to uh, you know, add that. But, uh, you know, I decided to finally three years ago with my co-founder to, to start Royby to have a much bigger impact on children's education because we saw a huge need in the market. You know, there are a lot of products and tools on the market in higher education, but when it comes to early childhood education, we are missing a lot of opportunities. We saw that opportunity. We decided to start as early as um, two to three years old in early childhood education, a lot of people actually don't realize that that time is a very critical time for the kids' growth. Uh, they, they build their self-confidence, their brain development. So we, we decided to utilize AI to personalize education for children to focus on their abilities and interests because as you can see, education system is quite traditional. It's one size fits all. I constantly say that it has to change, but making a change in education system is going to really take time, but we can start the change from our home, right? As you said, you kind of came in, in tandem with your other company. You saw some of the opportunities when um, IB, which is about five years ago that that started. Did I catch that right? Um, yes. And then... <laughs> But Roy B is two, almost three years approaching, but mm -hmm. now it's just getting into the market. Um, your ex previous experience and knowledge, that probably played a huge role in, in seeing the opportunity. Did I catch that right? 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we made a lot of mistakes. We learned a lot and uh, we, we really understood what it takes to, to build a company, especially when it comes to hardware. There is um, so much into making a hardware product. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but even one small component doesn't fit with the other one. Oh my goodness, you can lose like millions of dollars. <laughs> The um, uh, business model for this, how, how does that work? Because yeah, seeing on your site, you even see like um, uh, financing. So what's the, they have to divide the cost for the, the item. Is there, is it a monthly fee? What does that look like, the business model? So currently, Roybe is available at retail 199 and um, there's no subscription attached to it. And um, maybe in the future, we are going to have some on-demand subscription plans, especially when it comes to language packages. Uh, but currently, we, we have English content for language development, but also uh, outside of the U.S., uh, kids would learn English language, and it comes for free. Wow. So the, the biggest focus of the area right now is on language, to be able to learn a new language. What's the number of languages that you're um, supporting and supplying and helping? Um, so right now would be an English language and then over the cloud, uh, we will be adding more languages as we go on. Uh, yeah. So I would say within the next two years, uh, we are expecting to have uh, about three languages. And uh, it is difficult because it's um, still technology, it's not there. And when it comes to different languages, um, especially because we use voice recognition, there's some limitation. That's why we are taking some time to gradually develop that specifically for children. So let's dig into the technology a bit more because I am I'm fascinated. I see the technical specs that there's voice recognition, face recognition, yes. um, so, and um, emotion detection. Dig into that. Like, what are all the, the, the inputs that it can receive and understand both from the child and then mm -hmm. respond to it? You know, the fascinating thing about technology is that we have a lot of capabilities, but the use cases uh, could be different. And that's why uh, it makes a product really unique. For example, we, we use facial detection to say hello to the child. Because what we understood over the past two years of doing our research is kids really like to play with their toys, but when it comes to like after two weeks, they, they forget about their toys. They don't want to have the interaction. So we want to make sure that interaction continues because if you don't uh, use it, you lose it, right? <laughs> you want to make sure they continue using the product and uh, learn as much as possible and have fun. But also we, we use emotion detection. You know, emotion detection is a technology that has always been there. There is nothing unique about it, but the use case on Roybe is very unique because we use this technology to understand if the child is excited or not happy while practicing on our lessons. And that shows us if that lesson actually works for that child. Because one of the issues we see with children is when you ask them how they feel, especially when they are little, they really don't know, you know how they feel. They don't understand the emotions. But also, if we, we see they are um, not so happy or excited, Roby can react to it. So sometimes it, it might just laugh, you know, to get them excited. Uh, for voice recognition, we use this technology to understand what the child says. So Roby can respond based on the answers. Uh, and of course, it's a, a difficult area because for adults, it's easier. For kids, they, uh, if they want to say like yellow, it comes out as willow, bellow, many different variations. And that's the limitation, which is fine, but it takes a long time to develop that for a kid. For, for your own, then obviously you're, is you're recording and capturing all this, are you taking the, the recordings and using that to grow the database? And what's that privacy look like? Sure. So uh, we currently do not record um, any audio or video to be compliant with uh, COPPA policies, which is, which is children's privacy policies and GDPR. And that's one of the reasons we acquired this company early on, because when they started, the whole privacy policy was completely different than what it is today. 
but gradually we will have uh, partnerships for with universities, schools. So what we do is generally we pilot these products into classrooms, for example, or even uh, at homes with the, the consent of parents. And that's the time that we can do some recordings and analysis. But again, for AI to do better, we need much more data, but it's just going to take time to go around these policies, making sure we are compliant, but also making our uh, you know, technology better. Uh, you mentioned last, uh, towards the end of last year is when you truly launched it, uh, soft launch, and now you're, you're growing. Um, what's the kind of the metrics and growth that you've seen since then uh, and adoption? Um, we've seen a really good growth. Uh, I would say easily over 100% growth, but um, I think also the, the situation of pandemic uh, played uh, an interesting role in our growth. Uh, I wouldn't be able to really give exact percentage now, but a lot of like uh, partners or even like retail partners that they, they wanted to evaluate Roy B, they were taking their time, um, you know, now they're getting back to us and say, wow, we immediately want to Roy B because this is the future. <laughs> you know, for three years, we've been talking about this, that AI, remote learning, you know, is going to be the absolute future of how everybody learns. And it is interesting to see that a pandemic situation finally shows that where we are going. But also there are some challenging matters. For example, people are always worried, what about the human connection, right? So everything needs to have balance. We don't say we wanna replace humans or replace teachers. We want to provide um, an additional resource to help children as they learn. Why not make it a personalized experience? I think personalized experience is definitely the future. So I think you're definitely in, in going in the right direction. Question I have for you of this, this kind of uh, uh, the future as it comes to reality, there's more and more opportunities for personalized learning and online uh, education or digital education. What do you see as the different competitors that are out there? I mean, can, can they just have the same as an app on a phone? Why did you go for the hardware and how is it different? From other options out there? Sure. Um, I always say uh, so far we don't have direct competition. Of course, there are some social robots or even chatbots uh, applications out there. But one of the very big reasons we wanted to stay away from apps is that kids already spend so much time on large tablets, phones, TVs, and that's not really good for them. But the problem is, um, you know, there is no good product to replace that for them. Something fun that they see it like a friend, a toy companion that they can talk with, but also learn from it is, is one of the reasons, really big reasons that we wanted to um, have a different hardware that limits the um, screen time. It is fun, interactive, because that's a very big pain point for parents. But um, at the same time, you know, I'm sure we are going to have um, competition as so many other people have as we open the doors and bring even more opportunities as one of the leaders in this category, we are going to face um, competition. But again, that means it's a huge market and it is so big <laughs> that even if we have competition, we still have a large market. And I always say, you know, with competition comes opportunities too, because you can partner with them, uh, buy them, right? <laughs> there are many ways to, um, to continue being a leader in a category. Looking forward here then for you, what's the, the near term uh, that you're looking at working on and your goals for the next year? And then maybe long term, maybe five years or so, what are you looking at? Sure. 
Um, the near term is to continue uh, with our partnerships. Uh, for example, over the last event, uh, I would say two months, we opened up uh, sales channels on, on Amazon globally. We are available in the US, Japan, Australia. Now we are going to be available in Europe. And then we expanded in Middle East, gradually expanding into different regions. Now we are in UAE and it is growing. Uh, of course, continuing these partnerships and even partnerships uh, in terms of pilot with schools because we, we really need to analyze um, how Roybe works within the classroom, a large group. We can't just go and uh, launch big. <laughs> Normally, if you go too big too fast, uh, things won't work out, it fails. So we have to go step by step. These are the short-term goals, but of course, also improving our technology. Um, to be honest, over the past two months, our team has been working literally like day and night for the improvements, especially when it comes on the voice recognition, because as I mentioned to you, it's a very challenging uh, area. And uh, the difference is, is like day and night. Uh, we made so much improvement and also continuing to add content um, as an example. Because of the pandemic situation, we created a new character. It's also behind me. It's called Doc B, which is our little scientist that um, suggests to kids uh, in regards to self-care, well-being, to wash their hands, you know, cover their mouth if they cough or sneeze. And all of these, because they're all um, cloud-based, they, they, it's just software-based and goes into the hardware, it's been uh, amazing to add this content and see uh, the response from parents. So that's short-term. But also long-term, we, we of course want to expand globally, uh, even work with government entities in order to make Roybe available even in areas and with families that they can't afford Roybe, we want to make sure we can provide quality education to as many kids as possible. So that would be really, truly our mission. And uh, of course, we, we will be working on adding more features and even next generation for Roybe. What's a good first step for people to take to learn more and uh, to take action with it? Uh, to learn more about Roybe, uh, they can go to our website, which is roybyrobot.com. And uh, of course, we, we are always available. The customer service, our team uh, would be very happy to answer any questions. Be sure to check out the second part of my conversation with Elnaz, in which she talks about the lessons she's learned from crowdfunding a new product and offers her view on some of the qualities necessary for a successful entrepreneur.